Hi guys, it's Teacher Wendy. Here I am with another video for you. I hope that you're enjoying them. I miss you so much and I'm so glad that you've been sending me your artwork and showing me what you've been doing at home. It's not the same as being together here at um, art class, but at least you get to practice your art and have fun and maybe share your lessons with your siblings and your parents too. So I hope you enjoy this video. We're going to be trying to do everything that we do in regular art class, except we can't do sharing. But if you would just have your mom continue to send me all your drawings, then I can post them on social media and you can see what your friends are doing at home. So without further ado, here's the final project for the week. So we're going to start off with the body of the moth for our first practice uh, box. And I thought it looked so close to the shape of a heart. But that's what we're going to do right here. We're going to look at the very top of the very first part of his body. And we're going to make a horizontal, slightly curved line going all the way across. And then we're going to make some curved lines and it's almost like a heart. If you just, even if you wanted to, you could make a heart um, shape at the top. So we're going to curve around, come down to a point and come up. So it's very close to a heart shape. So go ahead and try that. You can pra practice it again if you want. A curved shape comes around to a point, goes up. And then after you do that, we're going to put the head of the moth and his two little antenna at the top, kind of pointing in. You can make them pointing out. And then the moth does have six legs, but this particular position that I have in my drawing and your drawing will only have four legs, but the part here has some other long antennas coming out of his, where his eyes are, so you're going to practice making those, which are two parallel curved lines on either side. And this is only a shortened version because the box is making it hard to do as long as they really are. Um, you can make a little eyes here. I believe that's where the eyes are on the side. And and there's just kind of feathery shapes on the inside of his, uh, this portion of his body. And the top of that heart shape portion is where the, where you see two arms coming out or legs or whatever they are. So we're just going to practice where those are positioned. All right, great job. So let's move on to the next section, which is just practicing the legs. So we're going to make the side of the body where the legs are coming from. And, you know, you're going to be able to make your own because, of course, this is magnified a lot from the size of a tiny moth. So you're just going to be making the legs the way you want them to look. There's something like that. The bottom one is coming out like that. These little sections. So decorate them and create them the way you want. But they're narrow and thicker in some parts and have little hands on the end. All right, you can practice those. And then for the wings. Now, I copied one of the patterns that you might see on it certain type of moth. There are hundreds of different varieties of moths. So go ahead and make your own pattern. But this is a pattern that you can copy if you want. So just follow me. Just that's the place where the wing is coming from. So from there, I'm going to make a diagonal line coming down, trying to make it fit in the box and a parallel diagonal line coming down 
And that's just kind of the uh, marking that this particular moth had. It has kind of a uh, riggedy, I don't know what you'd call it, some kind of a soft, feathery pattern. Because wings, it seems like wings, insects' wings are very similar to feathers in birds. I was just noticing that. So I'm outlining some of the patterns that I saw in the moth that I was observing. But you can make your own. And if you want, you can just outline the pattern with your color pencils or markers. You don't have to do it with your Sharpie or your pencil or whatever you're using. So just go ahead and create your pattern. And you can get really creative and imaginative. You could look up your own pictures of moths if you want to. So that's all we have for the practice page. Um, I've got the heart-shaped body part, the legs, six legs all together, but we're just going to do four, and then one of the wings. So that'll be enough for you to practice. You can go ahead and practice in all of the other boxes that you have. And when you're done practicing, you're ready for your final project. Awesome job, guys. So just like we do in our classroom, we're going to do relaxation. And this is where you just go in your imagination to one of your favorite places. And this is one of my favorite places. This is when we went up to the mountains one day and sat by a beautiful bubbling brook. And we just relaxed. We put our feet in the water. And you can go in your imagination or you could look at this beautiful video, but I want you just to relax, slow down your breathing, pay attention to any tension that you might have in your body, and relax your eyes because you're going to be needing your eyes for doing your final project. So you can stop this video and close your eyes and do what we usually do in class, or you can look at this beautiful place and just relax yourself, relax your eyes, relax your body, and just prepare to really focus on the final project. Okay, just like we always do during class, we have to figure out where we're going to start. And so you're going to look over your whole paper and you're going to see that where we're going to start is over on the left-hand side because we're going to put that heart-shaped uh, part of the moth's body over on the left, a little bit down from the top. So go ahead and make that line. And the way I have it positioned here, it's at a diagonal. So you're going to make kind of a straight curved line going across the page about like that. Then from here, we're going to make that heart shape body part comes around into a point on the left and then around to the point on the right. Now you can have, I'm having my moth face off in this direction, but if you want, you can have it uh, in the center. So it's really up to you, but this is the way I'm starting. Now I'm going to go and do the next section of his body, which is going to go like this. You can watch me and then you can do it. So you go down and in on uh, heading diagonally to the right and then you're going to go on the right hand side of that point and you're going to go down and in meeting it in a point. So it's kind of a extended part of his body and now we're going to go ahead and do the top. So there's a little head sticking out, kind of like that. And from the head, you're going to see those two little antennas, however you want them pointed. So that is pretty much the body that, um, that you've done so far. And now we're going to do uh, some of the other parts that we practiced. So there's those two parallel curved lines going off 
to the right, and then two parallel lines coming off, going to the left, and they're kind of off, coming off of where the eyes are. So you could make those eyes. Then, as I've said, the moth has six legs, but this, uh, from this point of view, we only see four. So let's go ahead and make those legs. So right here, I'm going to make my first leg coming out. I'm, I'm just uh, going ahead and you just follow me as you want. At any time, please just stop the video and practice or do the next leg. You don't have to do it right with me. You can take your own sweet time. Okay, then there's a little section right here and then it starts going like that. Just little sections and they're not going to look the same as mine because you guys are all unique artists and have your own ideas. But this is for the people who want to follow along and try to get it to look as close to mine as possible or realistically as possible. It's your choice. You know, if we were all robots and machines, we wouldn't need to draw. We would just use cameras, right? So we're making it unique and creative and artistic. Okay, now after you've done the two, um, two legs on the left, two legs on the right, these little antenna thingies and these little antennas here. All right, now we're gonna do the wings. So let's start with the, this wing, one on the left of his body. So what you're basically gonna do are make two parallel, uh, you're gonna make a straight line pretty much down. You're gonna stop around there. Then you're going to make another parallel straight line which is describing this particular moth's markings. So let's just do this wing to completion. So it has a raggedy jaggedy end. It's kind of like a feather shape. It's not completely straight, but I've just made these curved lines and then it goes up and joins right around um, the bottom of this body right here that we've done that point. So it's gonna go and meet, meet there. That's the left wing, and now we're gonna do the right wing. So it comes out here, about this far, little curve to it, and then we're going to do that kind of jaggedy, feathery end. And this one is going to come here, and there's another little section here that comes out from the end of that point. So it's a little bit of a different angle. So here you've got your insect, your moth. And as I've said before, moths and all insects are a much more simple animal than some of the other mammals that we've done. What makes this moth fun and interesting to draw is the color. So the color is gonna be found on the markings on his wings or her wings. So let's just do some markings and some designs and you may follow my ideas. I copied um, the markings of a particular moth, but you can do whatever kind of markings and design that you want on yours. So you're welcome to follow mine or make up your own. So it has kind of a design on the back of his body. It almost looks feathery or furry on the back of his body. I don't know if you've ever touched a moth, but it has a soft furry feeling. Not that I've touched a lot of moths. Okay, so um, this one, I'm just gonna follow the markings that I've, that I've copied just to show you some of the ways you can do it. And you also, you don't have to make the markings and the spots and the designs with a Sharpie. You can just do them with any kind of uh, art materials that you're using at home. Crayons or color pencils or markers. But this is what mine looks like. And I wanted to point out a couple art skills and techniques that we've talked about, little principles. And one of them is symmetry, or some, when something is symmetrical, it's the same on one side as the other. So moths and butterflies have symmetry. Their wings on the left are the same design as the wings, wings on the right. So 
keep that in mind. It doesn't look exactly the same because of the angle that we're seeing it from, but they are similar markings. So I'm going to try to repeat some of the markings that I see on the right as I've done on the left. So first of all, there is that line or stripe on the side and very similar, not identical, but very similar markings. So there are these two very colorful spots you'll see on the left, and I'm going to make um, similar spots on the right that are kind of like triangles. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in. So practicing symmetry is really good practice for us because we can learn to copy and try to make things identical the most the best way that we can it might not be exactly but it's very similar and then over here we just see a lot of other um, similar shapes on one side as the other so like this part here i'm going to fill in here you'll see when i um, add the color Okay, so look at your beautiful drawing. If you've done it in pencil, you can go over it with marker or you can just keep it all in pencil. It's really up to you. I like the, um, the Sharpie because I'm gonna go ahead and color this guy with my color pen, uh, with my markers. So it's your choice. I'm gonna get my markers ready now. These are the colors that I've chosen. And of course, I'm going to try to make it look like that again. But as I said, it's your choice. All right, the reason why I've chosen these colors, can anyone guess? Remember the word that we learned, complementary? Complementary colors? Well, complementary colors are opposite each other on the color wheel. And I've chosen orangey colors and blue colors, the little bit of uh, orangey yellow, to create the effect that I want. And as we've learned, complementary colors are colors that you use when you want to make something look really dramatic. And that's what I want my moth to look like. I want it to look very dramatic. If you want your moth to look beautiful and really pretty with soft muted tones you can get use colors that are close together on the color wheel like yellow and green and blue or orange and yellow and red but if you want to make it dramatic you can use complementary colors so I'm going to start start off with blue and I'm going to uh, put everything around these spots in my dark blue because the contrast between light and dark, the white areas that I'm going to leave and then the dark areas are really going to make it look dramatic and beautiful. So I'm just gonna do one wing and you're, I'm gonna let you do whatever you want to do.
fun. I'm going to take a green and put it in some other places just to add a little bit of a variation and contrast. All right, so that's my moth, and I can't wait to see yours. Um, go ahead and do the other wing. Try to make it symmetrical, like the same blue that you have here. You can put over there and just make it balanced and as, um, as beautiful as you can. All right, guys. So I want your mom to continue sending me all your drawings so I can see what you've been doing. And even though we can't do sharing time like we usually do, at least we can look at each other's artwork on social media, on Facebook and Instagram, and give each other a thumbs up and a like and a heart and a just a big hello and a big love. So that's what I'm doing today. I'm just sending you my love. I'm sending you all of my um, heartfelt congratulations for being who you are. And I'm just going to continue making videos every week, beginning, advanced, anything that I, anything that I can do to help you become great artists and to have fun and just to enjoy the gift that you've been given. So share with everybody you know, share with your siblings and your friends and your mom and dad and your grandparents. And uh, hopefully I'll see you again very soon. Bye. Bye, everyone. See you later.